Hello, in this video we're going to talk about anorectal abscess. This is an overview, an introduction. Now, anorectal abscess is localized infection with a collection of pus in the anorectal area. And the abscess is usually a result from invasion of normal rectal flora. So the normal microbes in the anorectal area causes a anorectal abscess. Let us now compare a normal to anorectal abscess. Let's look at the normal anatomy first. So here we have the anus, the rectum, the anal canal. The anal canal has um, actually involuntary muscles, the internal anal sphincters, and it also has the voluntary muscles, the external anal sphincter. The, lev the levator ani, also known as the muscular pelvic diaphragm, is the, mus the muscle tendon sheath that forms the majority of the pelvic floor. And it supports the pelvic viscera and aids in urinary and fecal um, movement, as well as maintaining continence. The peritoneum that lines the abdominal cavity also lines the digestive organs itself, including the rectum. An important anatomical site to know is the pectinate line, also known as a dentate line. Now the pectinate line is a is clinically important landmark due to the fact that it is visible and approximates the level of certain anatomical changes. So, so what are these changes? Well, embryologically speaking, above the pectinate line is where there are cells from an embryological endoderm origin and and below the pectinate line is the ectoderm in origin. This is different because the endoderm means it is part of the abdominal organs essentially and the ectoderm means it's the skin and because below the pectinate line it's ectoderm in origin so skin essentially it is very sensitive so below the pectinate line, it's a very sensitive area and pain that occurs here is very painful and well localized. Going back to the peritoneum here, again, the peritoneum is the lining of the internal abdominal cavity and also essentially covers or coats the digestive organs. So the rectum and other remaining colon is within the abdominal cavity and so has a visceral peritoneum around them. Now let us look at the anorectal abscess. They can occur in many areas around what we have drawn. They can be deep or they can be superficial. Depending on where the abscess occurs, the abscess is ref referred to or called uh, different things. So for example, the abscess that is formed between the internal and external sphincter are called the intersphincteric abscess. Abscess just below the skin and confined to the superficial subcutaneous layer are called subcutaneous or perianal abscess. And these are the most common. Ischiorectal abscess are large and go from the superficial to the deep. Supralevator abscess, as the name suggests, are abscess that occur above the levator ani muscle. The formation of an anorectal abscess can cause some signs and symptoms, including severe pain, especially when sitting. The pain doesn't necessarily have to go with bowel movements. There can be pain just whenever. And there can also be fever because as we know, an abscess is an infection. Another clinical feature is malaise and prolent discharge. On physical examination, patients should be in a perrectal exam position, which is lying on the side, knees up to chest. This will relieve the anal area. And what is seen is potentially a flocculence or patch of erythematous indurated skin within the buttock area. And here, as shown, the abscess is on the left. A digital rectal examination may also be performed, and this is to examine for any deeper abscess. And a digital rectal examination is done if there is suspicion of this, following a general observation.
Diagnosis of abscess is generally straightforward. It's history, the, ex the examination, including anorectal pain, fever, and a palpable anorectal mass. The pathophysiology of anal abscess. Anal abscess usually originates from an infected anal crypt gland. So here we have the crypt and here we have the actual gland it connects to. The anal crypt glands are situated roughly along the pectinate line. The crypts themselves, they are tiny mucous glands of lubrication essentially. So just before bowel movement, the sphincter muscles contract and squeeze out a little drop of lubricating mucus from each of these crypts. About 90% of all infections around the anorectum area originates from these crypts. And from these crypts, the, the bacteria can spread through the anal duct and then infect the glands. And from here, the infection can spread really anywhere where there is least resistance. It can spread submucosally, subcutaneously, and uh, transventerically, or other areas around the tissue. The general rule is that the abscess will collect in whichever anatomical uh, site the glands terminate, or whichever path of least resistance is. The differential diagnosis for anorectal abscess include pylonidal cysts, hydronitis suprativa, ortholin duct abscess in females, anal fissure, external hemorrhoids, and fistula in anal. Management of anal abscess is basically drainage under local anesthetic. Antibiotics are used for groups at risk. Further, fistulas can be identified using an anoscope by injecting fluid through a visible external opening and seeing where the fluid comes out from within the anal canal. If a fistula is identified, managing the fistula um, obviously comes with the whole drainage process. Complication of anal rectal abscess includes spreading to other tissues, as well as the development of a fistula. In this case, an intersphenteric abscess can cause an intersphenteric fistula. Approximately 50% of Patients with anorectal abscess will develop a fistula, and so assessing or looking for a fistula and managing it together is very important.